it has been a, a great almost two years and it's been a whirlwind of a time as well with everything happening uh, but there's a lot of good fruit that's uh, being born in, in the midst of the circumstances that are. Last year we celebrated the 150th anniversary of the church, the current church building of, of St. Joseph's. Um, it, the parish itself predates that uh, this current church um, and it was originally a parish for the Irish uh, of the area, um, appropriately enough today on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, but uh, sometime uh, shortly after the founding, um, there was also another parish here in Danville, St. Hubert's, which was for the German Catholics of the area. And uh, shortly after uh, those two parishes were established, there was a, a merging of the parishes. Um, and so St. Joseph's, um, which was, again, the original Irish parish name, um, was the name of the merged parishes together. Um, and so it, it's uh, nice that we have our uh, 150th anniversary of the, the current church and uh, looking forward to the, the many years to come. Uh, Bishop Gaynor was able to come for uh, the Mass on the anniversary date and we had a previous pastor who was here to um, to preach the homily that the people have known well, uh, Father Weary. Um, so it's a, a living history of the parish. So the parish uh, family-wise is about 1,050 families uh, on our registers, uh, and that translates to about uh, 2,500 people. Um, and it's a broad uh, spectrum, uh, as many parishes are, uh, but particularly here in Danville, a unique mix of, of people who have been in Danville all their life. And then because of Geisinger Medical Center uh, here in Danville, um, people from all across the country and across the world uh, who have moved here to little old Danville because of work at, at Geisinger. So um, it's a very wonderful blend of kind of those two ends of the spectrum. Uh, the local and, and the transplant, um, and it brings a great diversity to the parish. We have a lot of young families. Um, here our parish school has really um, become more robust over the past several years. Even in the midst of COVID, the parish school has been able to grow and, and thrive, um, which is a testament to the, the leadership, the principal at the school. Um, and just a great community that has received um, St. Joseph School. So there's a, a lot of, I would say, growth that's happening right now at the parish. And people have stepped up in, in so many different ways from, you know, volunteering to wiping down the pews after masses and, um, you know, doing the cleaning procedures after meetings. People have just kind of uh, stepped up in that regard and that's been um, encouraging to me because uh, there's been a lot of extra work thrown on me as pastor and so um, trying to figure ways to, to share the burden where appropriate and, and ask for help has been, has been humbling and helpful you know, all at the same time. I'm a lector, I've been a lector for a long time. Actually, um, in 1965, 66, I'm originally from Allentown, and um, that, of course, was right at the post-Vatican II, and Sister Durrett, God rest her soul, Sister of Christian Charity, in eighth grade, in 1965, she says, we used to go to Mass every day, eight o'clock Mass every morning, Monday through Friday, so they were looking for somebody to, do, to be lectors and do the reading, so she recruited me in 1965, and me and another guy that I remember, so I've been lecturing for a long time and I continue to do that and that's quite a blessing and I really enjoy doing that. The beautiful church that we have and the dedication to St. Joseph and the, the beautiful windows and what a prayerful atmosphere it is. The Knights of Columbus every year, they do a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner for anybody and everybody, which I think is a beautiful, beautiful uh, thing that they do in an outreach to the community. And Father mentioned the food bank that we have out front um, I know the school has done different things um, in the area. Montreux Preserve, a local area, recreation area, they've done work there. 
Um, and just, I think, just a lot of goodness, you know, to the people in the area who are in need. Uh, just a lot of, you know, little things as well, you know, just helping people with, you know, giving them food, groceries, gift cards, you know, those who are in need. Um, one, one of the things that we're doing, the lily that you mentioned, um, we were putting a lily every week on the altar in honor of St. Joseph. And uh, we just asked the parishioners if they'd like to, you know, contribute towards that, not like, you know, lighting a candle for them or anything. But once the bill is paid for the flowers, um, we're going to take the money that's left over and sort of like a St. Joseph's table, you know, we're going to give that money to some local charity that, that needs that money. This, for me, uh, has been a great opportunity to really dive into um, getting to know St. Joseph more as not just the patron saint of this parish, but, um, you know, the earthly father of Jesus. And um, it's given parishioners an opportunity to kind of hit the pause button and reflect on that a little bit more as well. We're doing, as, as other parishes are doing, the, the consecration to St. Joseph by Father Don Calloway. And we'll complete that consecration uh, this Friday, the Feast of St. Joseph. Um, and for the many people that are doing that, either participating in person when we have our group meetings or virtually watching those meetings online and participating at home, um, there's just kind of been a, a real aha moment with St. Joseph or lots of light bulb moments that have, have happened of really seeing him as more than just a placeholder, you know, like, mm -hmm. well, family needs to have, you know, a father. So, okay, check St. Joseph. Um, but there's really a lot of depth and substance to him, and, and that's come to light through this consecration. Um, so I say that by way of um, helping to set the context for the parish and the ministries and, and who we are um, in light of what we've been learning about St. Joseph as somebody who is um, really just a, a man of faith and a, a doer. Like, uh, when the going got tough, you know, St. Joseph put his faith into practice and, you know, hauled the family off to Egypt and made the sacrifice and, and all the other ways as, as Scripture reveals. Um, so we look to our parish and we have so many wonderful ministries and groups that are here. Um, that really just uh, help embody the faith that we possess and our experience of worship and kind of bring that out and extend it into parishioners' lives and into the community.